Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Freedom Friday. I want to talk to you today about hearing from God. I, I guess I should be more specific in that. I guess we're going to talk about more about listening to God. Well, I guess that is hearing from Him. Hearing is listening. But you know what? You can hear someone. You can hear someone and not listen to them. That's something you know. That's something Teresa and I I try to do all the time that if one of us is speaking and we're currently doing something, if we can stop what we're doing, or if we're at a place that we can stop what we're doing, we stop and we tell, like if Teresa asks me a question, say I'm in the middle of an important email or important doing something or other, and I, I said, hang on honey, I only got 30 seconds left, let, let me finish this thought I'm writing down, and then I'll give you my full attention. Or if I'm doing something, if I'm watching a video, or if I'm doing something, and it's, she starts talking to me I said hang on let me shut off what I'm doing so I can give you my full attention there's a difference between you know or hearing and listening I guess you could say they're the same thing but you can hear somebody but not necessarily listen to them because you have to listen with intent you have to be purposeful in what you do and this is something that the Lord wants us to do in everything we do he gives us something to do or he wants us to do everything he wants to be he wants us to be doers of the word and you know what he wants us, when he wants us to be doers of the word and not hearers only, that he wants us to do it with excellence. And um, the Bible says that whatever you do, do whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do unto, uh, do unto the Lord. All right, do as you're doing it for Him. All right, do it with excellence and do it to the best of your ability. So when we listen to each other, we should do that with with purpose and intent. And so that's what Teresa and I try to practice is that when another's speaking and if we're at a, a, a position or a place that we can stop what we're doing, we'll say, we'll, we'll stop and then we'll give my full attention. We'll give our, each other's full attention to each other so we get the whole story, so we get everything that the, that the other person wants to communicate, wants to convey to us. And let me give you an example of how that usually doesn't work. Teresa and I had this conversation last week where we were talking about this. I said, you know, I said, people often say, and it's good for people to have a word from God, but God doesn't speak to us, Father doesn't speak to us in one word sentences. In other words, people say, I, I had one word, and don't get me wrong, I've had this a lot of times in my life too, but I'm, I'm learning to hear him more completely and more fully because I'm giving my full attention to him. And this is also, this is, this is encouragement, this is exhortation that you can do this, okay? That Jesus says that my sheep hear my voice. In John chapter 10, the entire chapter, probably, well not the entire chapter, but the first half of the chapter, Jesus is speaking, he speaks probably maybe four, five, six times, says my sheep hear my voice, I call them by name, and I lead them out. That he goes be, before us and behind us. That the Bible says he hedges us in before and behind us. He's a, he's our point man, and he's our and he's he's covering our six, if military terms. He's he's our point man. He's coming. He's our front and our rear guard. So he knows us by name. He calls us out, and he says, "My sheep hear my voice." And Jesus also said that they will not follow the voice of a stranger. All right. So Jesus is speaking to us. So why don't we hear him, or why aren't people hearing him? Uh, because they're they're not listening. Um, they're they're not listening with intent. Okay, so I just want you to know that you can hear his voice. The Bible also says in uh, what is that John chapter seven? I think John seven seventeen. I think it says uh, if anyone wills to do his will. Let me look it up real quick. Mark Luke John. John 7, yes, start in verse 16. Well, actually, Jesus is speaking. He's, uh, he's speaking out loud. In, and now at the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? In other words, they're saying, How does this, how is this man speaking the things of God? Jesus answered and said to them, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills, to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether it is from men. 
So if you will to do his will, if you seek relationship with him, you're going to know whether it's, it's God speaking, it's God's words or not. If you have relationship with somebody, you know what somebody would say. Like if somebody came to me and said, Teresa said this, and it wasn't typically something that she would say, that then I would know because I have relationship with her because I have intimacy with Teresa that I would know that it wasn't her speaking. So if you have relationship with the Lord that you're going to know his voice, you're going to know that it's him speaking. Okay, you're going to know what he would say to you and they said they will Jesus said you you will not or my sheep will not follow the voice of the stranger. All right? Because they do not know his voice. It's like I said, if someone says to me Teresa said this and it wasn't normally what she'd say, I will not, I will say, that's not Teresa. Okay, so it's the same thing with our relationship with God. If, if you hear something or if you believe you hear something that God said something that goes against his word, then you can say, well, you know what? That's not God. So I'm not going to follow that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to follow that because, Lord, I believe that's not you. So anyways, so Teresa and I were talking about this and oh, getting a word from God. People say, I get a word from God. And God doesn't speak in one word sentences. God is always speaking to us. He, he communes with us. He converses with us every day. So people, so why aren't we hearing his voice? Is it perhaps maybe because there's too many things that are, are competing for his voice? There are too many things that are drowning out. And I think last week I talked about things and how things can compete for uh, the place in your heart with your relationship with God. In other words, you can elevate things above your relationship with the Lord and they can become, basically can become idolatry. When you place something in higher priority or importance above God, it doesn't have to be a, a, an image that you bow down to and worship. So, so perhaps that people are not hearing God's voice or completely what he's saying because they've got too many things going on or too many things drowning out uh, God's voice. You know, it's not hard that if you just, you go out in public these days and your, your senses, your five senses are just assaulted. I mean, your, your, especially your sight and your hearing, it's just assaulted with, with everything going on around you. Sometimes it's just too much. I, I don't like it. It's just too much sometimes. So you have to get away. You have to be, purpose, you have to be purposeful and intent on hearing God's voice. So Teresa and I were talking. So if I'm, say if I'm driving a car, and I'm listening to her because I place a high value and importance on my marriage on on Teresa that I knew she was talking but I was currently doing something okay so it doesn't have to be driving cars say I'm doing something else say I'm occupied with something else and this is why we stop what we're doing to listen to the other person so uh, say I'm doing something and I know Teresa's speaking to me that if I don't give her my full attention I may only catch a word here or there. I'm, I may know she's speaking and I may get the gist of the conversation, but I may hear uh, one or two words out of every sentence and I say, okay, and then when, when she doesn't speak in and I turn to her and say, okay, let me get that correct, get this correct, that you said this, 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 and this. She said, well, yes, but I said also said more. I said this, 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 and this. Why was that? Because I didn't give my full attention to what she was speaking. Where now, imagine if I'm doing something, if I'm writing an email, if I'm currently engaged in something, or if I'm doing something and I say, and she starts speaking to me, well, if I stop and I give her my full attention and I stop what I'm doing and I give her my full attention, now I'm purposefully listening to her. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing every word she says. I'm hearing all the words that she says. And so then I'm able to get the entire conversation. I'm, I'm able to hear her and understand her entirely. And you know, let me talk about a little bit about understanding also. That uh, in, in the Marines, when I uh, say as being a platoon sergeant, which I was in charge of like 30 young Marines, right? When I give a young Marine, I say Lance Corporal, it's a rank, it's like an E3, in, it's an E3 in the Marine Corps. It's a young Marine. Well, I say, Lance Corporal, come here, I got something for you to do. And he'll come to me and say, yes, Sergeant, what can I do for you? And he, I say, I need you to go do A, B, and C. Okay, do them in this order, and I need you to do this because this is very important. I'll give him orders to do something. Then most often, if I don't know the young Marine, if I don't trust him or if he's, yet, if he's just learning to follow orders and stuff, that um, 
I'll ask him, can you repeat, or okay, I'll say, repeat that back to me. What I just told you to do, repeat it back to me. And so he'll repeat it back to me. All right, Sergeant, you told me to do A, B, and C and do it in this order in this priority. And I'll say, yes, that's exactly right. Now, carry on. And so he'll say, yes, Sergeant, and he takes off and goes about whatever I told him to do. Well, that's confirmation, all right? And I'll give you another example of that, that I serve on uh, in an executive protection team for uh, certain clients, to protect certain clients. And it's on a team, a, a great team I serve with. And my team leader, whenever he gives me a mission to do, uh, before I leave, just because I know it's extremely important, I'll stop and I'll say, okay, okay, sir, uh, you want me to do this? You want me to cover this area? You want me to go to this person and verify this? And whatever he's told me to do, I'll actually confirm it back to him so I... So I understand completely because I know it's important because I know a lot of times that someone's life depends on it because we're uh, because of the job I'm doing, all right. So someone's life depends on, it or it's just very important that this gets done. So I'll confirm it back with him, and uh, my team leader, who's also a uh, head of a, a, a very a wonderful ministry, a wonderful man of God, he says, you know what? And so then, oh, actually, after I. Let me back up. After I would confirm it, then I would go carry out my orders. So later on, he and I were talking, and he said, you know what? What you do with me is nothing more than what you should do with God. Uh, and you know what? The Lord is so much more real to us than any one of us, anything on this earth will ever be. The spirit realm is the parent realm of everything you see, the physical realm. God was before everything, and he'll exist after everything is. He was uh, he was before time, okay? So in other words, he is more real to, to us than anything else, okay? So if I would confirm my orders with the, the man, with my team leader who told me to go do something important, wouldn't it make sense that if the Lord tells you to do something, instead of rushing off and getting it wrong because you know it's, it's very important, with the Lord, it's more important than anything else we got to do, uh, instead of rushing off and, with haste and getting it wrong, wouldn't you want to confirm that? And, well, that, that's a good idea. This is wisdom. So what I always do is, and I know we're talking about understanding, about hearing God's voice and understanding, that I would confirm with the Lord, okay, Lord, I believe you're telling me to do this in my heart. I believe this. And how do I hear that? How do I hear God's voice? Well, I have, a, first of all, I have a desire in my heart. I have an unction. The Bible calls it an unction. I know that's Christianese. I have this, this will or this want to do something. And I look at that will or that want, and I say, well, you know what? Well, it's, it's not against God's word. It's not against the Bible. It's not, it's, it's, I know God's voice. It's something that he would want done. It's done out of love. It's done out of uh, part of what he's called us to do, the Great Commission, preaching the gospel or teaching. You know, and so I'll, I'll verify that with Lord. I'll say, Father, I believe you're telling me to do this. You know, and if I'm not sure, I'll kind of wait on it. I'll wait on it a little bit, and I'll meditate on it. I'll think about it, I'll meditate on it. And pretty soon, after a while, after meditating on it and seeking his counsel and, and, his, and, and listening to his voice and spending time in prayer and thinking about it, as, as the Bible says, that I think it's in Colossians, that he says he gives us the will and the to-do. He gives us the want and the ability to do it. So he puts that desire in our heart. Then I'll say, Father, I, I believe that you want me to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I, then I head off in that direction. I go do it. Okay, so I confirm it with him. And so that's what I wanted to tell you about understanding. So I'm going to keep this a short short lesson today. So I'm, I'm just going to... I'm going to start to wrap this up. I'm going to uh, kind of go over again, recap of what I just talked about. So in John chapter 10, Jesus is speaking to the Jews and he says, My sheep follow me. I lead them out. So Jesus goes before you. When Jesus tells you something to do, he's going to go before you and he's also behind you. He protects your front and your rear. Right? He's your, your point man and he covers your six. Right? That's what we say in the military. He's covering my six. He's watching my back. Right? We hear his voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. So if it's in the word, if Jesus said it in the word, if the Lord said it in the Bible, then it, that means that you can do it. You can hear his voice and you can hear it with entire, in, 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 its, in its entirety. You don't have to just hear a, a word here or there. But in order to hear it, you have to give 
um, in, you have to be in, intent and purposeful and listening to what he's speaking. You have to give your attention, your time to him. Get away, shut off everything, remove the distractions, as Hebrews chapter 12 says. Let us, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 says, let us lay aside every weight and sin which, which so easily ensnares us. Sin and weight, all right, it doesn't have to be necessarily sin to, to um, slow, uh, slow us down, but it can be just any weight or distraction in our life. So we can hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And they, he also says that they do not know the voice of a stranger. All right, so be purposeful in listening to the Lord. He is speaking to you. He's always speaking to you. Let me give you something else I've been doing too. That this is just a practical thing. I started doing this again. I know I spoke to you probably in the past about this, that I've done this in the past where I've set my watch every 30 minutes on a countdown timer. And my watch will go off every 30 minutes. And every 30 minutes I stop what I'm doing. If I'm in a place I can do it, I'll stop and I'll talk to the Lord out loud as if he was standing right next to me. Because you know what? He's, he's omnipresent. So he is standing next to me. And you know what? He is in us. All right, the Holy Spirit, we are the temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit is in us, Christ in us, okay? But every 30 minutes, I'll talk to the Lord. And I'll, when I talk to him, I try to, what I've been doing lately is, all right, if it's, I want a normal, I want a, a wonderful, great, normal relationship. I don't want a weird relationship with the Lord, okay? And so every 30 minutes I'll talk to the Lord, or if I'm not in a position, if I'm standing in a grocery, in the line at the grocery store, I don't bust out loud and just start talking to the Lord, although we shouldn't really care, but I know people look at us kind of funny. So uh, either that or I'll, I'll pray right there. Every 30 minutes I'll pray and I'll turn my mind, the, as Tozer says, uh, A.W. Tozer calls it the inward gaze of the soul. That's good. Um, Tozer says, the inward gaze of the mind, the will, and the emotions toward the Lord. Our inward gaze of the soul is always on the Lord. So every 30 minutes, I'll do this. And boy, I've been doing this last three days. And you know what? It has just been a blessing to me. It is, I have, I have purpose to do this. Because there'll be sometimes every 30 minutes, I, I won't, my, my flesh won't feel like doing it, but I'll do it on purpose. And it has been such a blessing to me. So I want to encourage you, uh, give it a try. If you feel so inclined, give it a try. Anyway, let me jump back a little bit again. I know I said I was bringing this to an end, but I, something else came to mind here. When I said I want a normal relationship with the Lord, I don't want anything that's weird. Uh, I read uh, in a, The Nature of God. It's a book. Andrew Womack wrote it. It's a wonderful book talking about the nature of God, his character and his nature. In the first paragraph, and I think in the first chapter, he's talking about a father that's holding his little, his young girl, his young daughter. And the young daughter looks at her father and she doesn't speak to the Lord this way. And I wish I had it to, to read it to you, but I actually forgot it at home. But the little girl doesn't speak to her father in this way when he's holding her. The little girl doesn't say, Father, I confess that you are a good dad. I confess that you won't drop me, and I, I, and I believe with, with all my heart that you're going to feed me today. You know, the child doesn't do that to the parent because the child just knows the nature of their parents, that, that their parents are good, that her father loves her, and that her father is going to provide this for her. All right, so the, uh, the daughter just says, Daddy, I love you. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me this toy. Thank you for, for whatever you're doing for me. We, uh, Paul says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be named, known to God. No, I didn't say, did I say be thankful for nothing? No, I said be anxious. Anyways, listen, let me slow down here. Paul says, be anxious for nothing, worry about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be named, known unto God. So we are supposed to be thankful for what God gives us, all right? So anyways, I don't want my relationship with the Lord to be weird. I want a wonderful, amazing relationship. And this is, this is a path that the Lord has had Teresa and I on for a couple months now, is that it's, it's all about relationship with the Lord. If I, if I would lose everything else in the world, you know, I, I wouldn't care because I still have relationship with the Lord. If I couldn't figure out anything else in the Word, there are a lot of things in the Word that I don't understand. 
But you know what? I have relationship with Father, and I'm not worried about it because I know He has my best interest at, in, at heart. He has me in His hand. He's covering me with His right hand. And in shadow of His wings, I will rejoice because He covers me with His feathers. His truth is my shield and my buckler. That, uh, boy, he, He's just good to me. So even if I don't understand it, He's just good to me because He is a good God. He's a good Father. Anyways, I'm going to stop there before I screw something else up. I love you guys very much. I believe you're going to have an amazing, awesome, blessed weekend. And I'll see you again next, fr next Friday on Freedom Friday.